Thank you. Um, I would like to ask Dr. Atitab, um, in regards for e-sports or e-games, uh, we're having a hard time to uh, adapt it into our game development program because of the activities encompass a different sort of learning outcome, uh, particularly towards the, uh, uh, the disciplinary to prepare for e-sports requires a different practice in comparison to game development. Um, I'm just curious, how do you uh, adapt uh, towards esports as part of your curriculum? Okay, uh, the question is how to adjust the mm -hmm. esports and curriculums, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Okay. Uh, at the first, I develop my my uh, uh, my curriculums in the active and game design. Uh, at that time, I, I, five years ago, I study, I, I go to talk with the uh, industrial of eSport and eGame or whatever, uh, try to, to, to see how my curriculum can fit in with the in, industry of the eSport. Because already I have a problem with the, uh, I came from the private universities, like uh, we accept the student application, like a hundred students come to my uh, departments, interactive and games. After first year, the second year, they, they get a lot, about 40%. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's from the problems. I, I at the head of the department, I, I thinking about, oh, my, my student, 40 students get lot and they already registered for one, one year already. They pay some money already because the private university is very expensive. And at that time, I think eSport is, the basic is, the tool is game. Because if you develop a good game to the uh, eSport, the 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 children the student can play a good game on on the eSport. I I start with that with the problem on the curriculum and the the uh, opportunity in eSport. The eSport have a lot of opportunity in in uh, in job career, like a uh, uh, steaming. Uh, that's that just be a problem. Uh, Shao. Uh, game caster, organizer, uh, I think uh, I think still a lot of- So many jobs around it. Yes, eSport. The, the uh, ecosystem mm. like uh, uh, on eSport, it come around with the game, with the game industry. I, I, uh, I decided to put eSport in, uh, in my department at that time, like uh, Five years ago, uh, because I already left uh, uh, that school about four years. I be at Silvergon for four years. Right now, uh, I come back to see my my friend. Uh, they happy. The student have joy. They love game, but they don't want to uh, create game. They don't want to design, but they wanna they wanna do something about game. You like hamburgers, but you don't want to meet the cow. Right? Yes. <laughs> I think that's, that's gonna be solved with the curriculum problem. I see. So uh, I guess Thank uh, you. a metaphor Thank you. would be like Amer the American gold rush. The people who actually made a lot of money were the people selling jeans and, and things for mining the gold, but not actually mining gold themselves, right? So perhaps focusing on the ecosystem might raise enough interest. Mm -hmm. All right, very cool. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Oh wow! Um, I, I would like to uh, address another, uh, the, another, uh, another uh, reason for for the uh, the the last questions. Yes, I think uh, like uh, in Thailand we have contents, we have histories, we have ancients, art and designs. Right now, do the very good role of that to tell the stories uh, in different media, different ways. I think art and design right now is working. And we have the, I think another building, we have creative 
uh, economy, <coughs> I think, uh, uh, the, from the governments, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's going to have to be a little bit go to the province. I think they, they, they try to do in Bangkok, I think for 10 years, uh, they go to Chiang Mai, Khon Khan, uh, another province. Mm -hmm. I think on my, uh, on myself, gov uh, if government put on that organization a lot, art and design gonna pay very good, very good for the economic for Thailand. Silpagon and Suik are leading the way, I believe. Yes. We're pushing know. these things. I'd like to, uh, can I ask, uh, can I open the platform to one of our first year students? Uh, just to hear uh, from a different perspective, someone young, right? Someone who's now coming into the industry, who's new, right? I'm asking a question now. Go, on first. Uh, go ahead. Um, maybe um, one of our mics. Okay, so I have two questions regarding to the economy and yeah. like the copyright system. Uh -huh. Okay, so the copyright first. So right now there's an issue in the US where the Congress is trying to pass a devious law where they're like, you know, increasing the DMCA takedown and like the copyright felonies. Uh, no, 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 uh, okay. So they're trying to pass the law where like, if you committed felonies, they not. Uh -huh. where you committed DMCA, strikes and like copyright laws, you would face either a big fine or straight up jail time. Mm. And it, this law passed to like the big platform like YouTube, Twitch, where it's streaming and content creator. Uh, one of the, what, what I want to ask is that, does this law that applies to the US will be applied to Thailand as well? Because yeah, the YouTube and Twitch is a US based program. Would you happen to know about that? Uh, this is about the, uh, <laughs> uh, how how to answer this question? How about maybe not answer that questions, but I okay. I I I'm gonna go with the case studies. Hmm. Uh, yesterday I just uh, have a meeting with the uh, committee with the. Uh, uh, the departments of uh, contemporary uh, cultures, uh, who is be the have to uh, develop the law about the uh, ratings and the permission for the game. Okay, the problem is uh, that that law is have been used for. Uh, about 12 years ago, it never been changed for 12 years. And like uh, all lies, it can do anything with the all lies. Can do like a CD or PlayStation, something like that. This law is we try to uh, put about six years ago. Right now we, we have to still start it again. Uh, it's some kind like a, uh, something that be impact with the social, with the uh, communities. Is in in our country is very go uh, a little bit slow, but I still have a hope that after that uh, yesterday the community uh, we have a meeting, we try to do this this law is mm -hmm. as soon as possible. That is the uh, ratings and the, the permission for the game. Because right now in Thailand, you didn't, you didn't see the rating on the game, right? Because the law is doesn't uh, cover that 13 years ago. Something like uh, the, the legacy or the, that you asking in, you, you, you asking about in US, right? And Thai is be the different because we different culture, different communities. You can't really compare. Yes, that's, that's just my, but I gotta do my job to put that, <laughs> that uh, ratings, every game come to sell in Thailand, you at least please put the rating on your game. We didn't, uh, again, you anything for the uh, children mm. and uh, the family can see game, this game is for 13, for 18, for 20, something like that. That that's what we try to 
to do. Okay. So, but my, my full-time job is I'm the faculty uh, member of Silapagon, but that is just like another for the, uh, for the publics. Okay, thank you very much. Now, I know uh, it is becoming uh, slightly soon the noon, so I'd like uh, to invite everyone to make sure to have some refreshments. We can lively up, right? And we're gonna take a little break. Uh, because we're not on TV, we can't say change the, uh, don't change the channel, but please don't close that tab, all right? Thank you very much, and we'll come back in about 15 minutes. Thank you. Okay. Thank Dr. Atitev. Thank, thank you very much. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So, hello everyone. My name is Gabriel. So, I'm the coordinator for this city with Ajahn Koi, who's sitting in front of me. You can't see her, but she's here in spirit. And today, I will start first with, oh, hello, hello Dr. Kairou. <laughs> uh, with our beloved friends that I actually never met in person, but we talk a lot last semester. Uh, we both have the same field uh, in our love, which is photography. And so basically our first paper today comes from assistant professor, Dr. Kairul Azril Ismail from UCSI Malaysia. Uh, Dr. Kairul is the director of ICAD, which is the, the Institute of Creative Arts and Design at UCSI with a background in photography. Um, so, if I'm right, you can correct me. You are a researcher in wet plate and collodion photography, also a practitioner. And today's paper that he's going to present to us is called Practicing the 19th Century Photo Historical Processes in the 21st Century. Uh, it's your turn, you. Dr. Carol. Thank you, Gabriel. Um, I would like to start sharing uh, with the audience uh, with my slides presentation. Um, hopefully that, uh, that is in its place. Okay, um, right. Okay, um, today I'm going to talk about in terms of practicing the 19th century photo historical process for the in the 21st century, particularly in the area for sort of uh, conservation training program in which uh, deals with photographic materials. Now we all know that um, we are in this sort of condition in which uh, everybody needs to be much more aware and trying to stay safe. But one thing that I start to realize and in the duration of this almost a year long uh, pandemic situation itself, uh, we, I sort of have a, a lot of a reflective moment and also tons of a reflexive as well. Uh, whenever that I have looked towards the Malaysian art history and the continued development into the knowledge of art that, that is commonly being transmitted by the artists, particularly in Malaysia, uh, was through various channels. Um, I noticed that uh, through migration of artists who pursue art education abroad, commonly would bring back the practice, the principles, the methods, and the importation of its methodologies and literatures. This came about as a factor that resulted in changes uh, towards most of the uh, local artists' themes and the preoccupation of their newfound or certainly founded disciplinary practices. Commonly that we see this uh, happening uh, in the late 20th century, where art becomes as a tool to communicate and highlight certain issues that affected the Malaysian society. Uh, it was observed uh, the increased participation for Malaysian artists regionally and also international networks from Binali, Trinali, uh, and also it does help as well now that we have a lot of budget travel provided by low-cost airlines carriers, and also the internet had increased the mobility the visibility and exchange of professional dialogues between artists and its regional partners, uh, particularly over in the last 20 years. The easy access to technology and the World Wide Web had served as a catalyst to this driving factor. So, however, what's changed is how we disseminate and how we take in and respond to the information that is on our labs right now, it, particularly um, utilizing all these tools would help people to connect and to gather information rather quickly, just uh, what we're doing today, which is a webinar session. Although I have concerns, uh, particularly on variants on all these alternative methodologies in arts and practice for the last two decades, 
it's within the attitudes of those who are involved in art groups and the collective uh, spaces, particularly towards the uh, market-oriented art world, which is never that actually clear and still quite fragmented. Um, we have our fair share as well, factors as uh, ethnicity issue, race, racial majority, and also even language gravitates artists towards a certain groups of collectors that they are very comfortable with. This could be seen as a nature that tended to have members who are predominantly a certain racial group and economic means, given that Malaysian artists and art communities are still so fragmented and communal. This move towards what I would say my fair share towards photography is not to be recognized uh, as both art and applied science, but it is also interlinked with technology in which images are captured and preserved. It's natural that these components in varying degree could be evident that found in the practice. I would like to share this uh, sort of note, um, particularly if uh, as technology make people's life easier in the long run, it still somewhat disengage the environmental experience. This will hurt quite, uh, quite sorely actually, uh, particularly in the area of arts. And artists are the investment of our future and certainly they are the pinnacle towards a betterment. Uh, towards whichever country that they reside. So to extent in which art, science or technology dominates, particularly in the area where I'm mentioning that I'm in photography practice or photo historical processes, is within the hands and also imagi imaginative eyes and minds of our practitioners. There are many moments um, that how I have seen that we always go back to the past. Um, where we emulate our reminiscent memories, define of what was it like, what was it like before. We tend to push images that is obviously, that is commonly on our mobile technology to emulate or simulate the physical similarities of the past, up to a point to persuade to think the past is in our hand, having it commonly what we see as age tone. There is a lot of limitation qualities, physical limitation qualities, even though is virtual, we take it into black and white, sepia, faded dyes of Polaroid. And my interest in the history and theory of photography image from the closely parallel problem that is encountered in this practice, having begun that uh, towards photography as a way of uh, late modernist called Isaac, I also realized that photography was it in its own a process that is being assigned, hopefully as a new position within the late modernist system of the arts. Uh, and here I would like to uh, cite Grant Romer, who is a fantastic photography historian that works very closely alongside with the George Eastman House. Uh, he noted that in the early 1970s, the conservation of photographs began to define itself within the conservation profession as a distinctive and uh, separate specialty. The pioneers in this field had argued that the unifying and essential nature of true photographs was commonly origin in the chemical response to radiant energy, no matter how varied in material or structure on how or how much they might resemble other forms of graphic imagery. Furthermore, they made the case where it was photographed uh, to be looked at as objects, not just images. That requires special conservation approach beyond what photographic industry and paper conservation was able to offer. This sort of thing would come about to a new professional specialty, which established itself by being able to clearly define photograph. I will come to a conclusion to say, photography has moved terminology. It's like, um, if I would uh, hazardly uh, appoint a guess, Photography was once we, where uh, we utilize inject technology. Thank goodness it doesn't last that long. We call it photography. We call anything photography that it moved from one mass produced to another. So this came about as a spark of cautionary and historical curiosity of mine. Perhaps it is significant where I begin innocently enough by looking at this much preserved specimens of historical past inherited image objects, much like one would gaze upon old worn jewelries. Silver plates um, in which you can see here uh, are 
some may, may see such technology, were claimed to be a 19th century nanotechnology by the University of Rochester, in which this 190 years old methodology still managed to impress even of today's practitioner and the viewers of this craft. Literatures in the past were abundant, uh, such as uh, John Fowler, Waldeck, Easterbrook, Elliot. Yet many of these methodologies requires much further exploration and, and its own material, which requires understanding the involved dimension and its depth. These methods are commonly sound, but certainly committed knowledge, which will only arrive from informed experience, which been constructed with a good amount of dedication. And this goes as well, uh, much more recent modern manuals, which authors such as Franz Scully Osterman and Mark Osterman, Queen Jacobson, Gilles Einsfeld, Susan Bargen, White, Blacklow, Christopher James, Alan Green, and certainly my all-time favorite, John Coffer, a contemporary practitioner who lives in a secluded hermit life, uh, the one that you see on the far left, to buy a copy of his handwritten manuals. You got to actually uh, send a post, uh, what's it, a postal order by mail, through snail mail, and I got to wait out about three to four months to receive it. Um, the lessons of photography history teaches that there is an astonishingly rapid loss of knowledge and skill attending unsurpassing of one commercially dominant system of photography by another. A lot of research effort certainly is there in photo photograph conservation that has been and will be devoted to rediscovering and exploring the past methods. Historic processes, recreation is a fundamental part for photographer, photograph conservation education. The loss of knowledge of the craft in traditional photography is still ongoing. Uh, the experience in developing latent images by chemistry, the fear is soon to be unknown by most. It is evident that a uh, conservation specialty devoted to photographs, however, defines what the term photograph is. One must not be confused what photography is, what photography is, but this is what uh, emphasis on the nomenclature of it. So the simple analogy that I would like to place here is we still get astonished by the works of executed, well-executed, beautiful penmanship, the art of writing where it was a common practice by most, not even far too long ago, about, about 30 years ago, I believe so. To my own personal curiosity as well, the practice of photo historical observation, it was even well noted in the early manuscript of the, uh, one of the uh, teachers of a transcribe that goes by the name of Munshi Abdullah. 19th century Malay transcribe who had written on the account of his observation of the daguerreotype. This is uh, in Malay language and it's being written with Arabic uh, uh, in Arabic writing in which he had a great tentative details on the steps which I would say is close enough to be a manual on his own of a daguerreotype in which he calls it uh, the, all the plates that he observed as hikmat, H-I-T K and A T, which in Malay, uh, in which uh, defines as an inner or understanding the essence of being. So this, I was quickly impressed that that might otherwise be the case. By to some extreme degree, photography has its own meaning that is dependent on the context. Uh, uh, sorry, on the context itself. Nowadays, uh, we grasp on the visuality rather than manner of methods of his creation. So I build up labs, I study all these manuals, and I understood the past had a monumental range of experimentations and grasping attention to the methodologies from the daguerreotype, ambrotype, salt prints, albumin prints, all the way to silver gelatin prints. And of course, uh, doing this, uh, all forms of uh, visual art, uh, unlike, it's unlike uh, studying cinematography, um, in each of own essence, uh, making images carries a good amount of discontinuity on its context and the incompletion of the narrative of captions, which seems to be the fundamental, despite various attempts to reconstruct or assuring many formats, the so-called notions of uh, organic unity 
and cohesion that one image can bring. So building labs, and certainly for the past year, and also I'm quite excited to announce that even like next year, um, I've been building labs, uh, mobile labs, and last but not least, and, and you can see on the, on the lower right side that I had acquired a, sort of an ambulance uh, to be a my mobile laboratory. If I, if kids, or actually the teaching of this method can't be done where I call upon people, I can still go to them. So this is uh, my initiative and efforts. But the problem is uh, of a treatment per se, a dilemma what Walter Benjamin had coined. Uh, looking at these cultural artifacts uh, as a sort of afterlife. This becomes especially important for photography, which commonly the audience as we become as an emancipated spectators, which there is faith uh, that is being placed to whatever editorial revisions has been casted upon the image, commonly that we see on our mobile phones. Uh, probably the only image objects that we reckon with almost on a daily basis. So I had ventured into various, reason, uh, various regions on the northern sides of Malaysia, learning the craft, locally seek materials that can be sourced and produced. And yet, this is where I believe like uh, this uh, noted as a, an unnoted manuals per se. And if you are the follower of Breaking Bad, I found my Heisenberg, um, to those that probably are familiar with that TV show. Uh, it was this a retired old silversmith who had impressed me with his nonchalant manner in creating silver nitrate, which is an essential ingredient towards most, if not almost all, silver imaging. A process which most practitioners would deem very lethal. Uh, to make silver nitrate, it would produce nitrous dioxide, which is one brief would collapse your lung and also it would hurt a lot. I've, um, I've learned this through laboratory and uh, doing all the necessary uh, uh, health safety procedures. And uh, what you can see on the right side there is a cup of silver nitrate, which I produce in crystal clumpy forms. And when I found this old retired silver smith, he just, it's a backyard kitchen method. But what he produced there, as you can see on the left side, it's the most beautiful silver nitrate I've ever seen. It's spider web, silky, and he did it is just without any cautionary steps. And I, I, I recall specifically, it's like a, he just told me to pour a cup or he called it as a, let me try to recall it in English, uh, acid para. So it's a silver acid, that's what he coins it. And he used all these uh, nomenclatures, which I haven't heard of, and it was a difficult, to write it in modern terms and and it was a symbol of what i found out much later of nitric acid which i handled barehanded so i told him he's like okay what okay what's up with that so he said oh yeah if you spill it on your fingers just dunk your fingers into that tub of water but this method i mean like when it produced like the most intricate and even almost um, unwritten accounts on making the most pure silver nitrate it's just baffled and astonishing. And I believe man, it goes beyond simple manuals. It creates the dialogue of framework in which I think can be sort of a way uh, training program at the very least based on the old craft and methods that was established either by old practitioners or much potential to which uh, sort of understanding in terms of arrive of the way of making. There are many tools that I built along the way. Uh, many frameworks of, uh, in which uh, studies, uh, formulas, ingredients, a lot of mileage to go into it in creating the ways of making with modern materials and modern uh, sort of, uh, yeah, modern materials and modern designs. And material studies of the past patterns, uh, modern materials could be considered and bring about and also needs to be designed. The current idea that what is happening now uh, in the field of photography uh, commonly can be appeared in many sub sort of sub courses and these are the body of knowledge as a practitioner you have to know the fundamentals and analog photography certainly you you got to learn chemistry uh, design technology is 
pretty much uh, the current contemporary uh, placement. I have to learn to the art of carpentry, metal smithing, and certainly the appreciation of history and the understanding of physics and the, uh, with a dash of natural philosophy, which does help the soul as well as one you see. So the absolute point in doing all these photohistorical materials can be added into, uh, into the conservations, preservations, the preventive management, and to even some degree, if one's able to reach the restoration effect or efforts. This sort of dialogue um, so attempts to promote some sort of specialization. Hopefully, it can be considered a standardization as well through sort of academic homogenization or professions in which it can arrive to various uh, manner that one follows from uh, education to the next. If one were to follow efforts by the American Institute of Conservation of Historic and Artistic Works, uh, this sort of um, uh, six areas that, that you see here uh, reinforce the idea of a certification, an interdisciplinary collaboration uh, towards a further specialization, particularly in the area of photograph conservators. Uh, the much better purpose was uh, this body of knowledge and also uh, the six areas that was, that was being noted is to provide um, sort of support towards existing program that already uh, established in uh, art conservation, particularly in the areas of material science, analysis technique, art history, papers and objects, painting, conservation and so forth. Observing students actually that is coming from trained conservation programs, which is, uh, I believe, is being offered at West Dean College in Singapore, Institute of Conservation in London, Gettys Museum, certainly by the George Eastman House, Northeast Document Conservation Center, and EDCC, the Fox Talbot Museum in the UK, the National Archives, and many subsections in most of the major museums across the world. If the specialization and advanced level of this intricate knowledge is uh, therefore can be promoted to be, to be considered to the use of material studies and certainly the study of methodologies arriving from optimal exposure and the development condition in different phases uh, of photography, technology and lineage. However, this sort of mapping does not pretend to give the student a solid practice in the duplication of historic negatives. It is rather what I see as a theoretical presentation, which complements the practical demonstration of the possibilities and the difficulties involved in the reproduction of these photo historical processes. Candidates or students who goes through this undertaking in a way will be familiar with the technical and the visual qualities of successful and even non-successful reproduction duplicates of these processes. They may also improve their judgment capability to evaluate works done by photographers at different institutions. Uh, the procedures are for correcting different types of deterioration, particularly optically as well, and the principles behind them would be mentioned. Owing to the variety and the complex nature of photographic materials, the gamut of knowledge, for this photographic conservation, it has a wide interest. Uh, and I've been going around and also display, and I found that the easiest actually um, sort of attachment of uh, photo processes in education is not on the higher education level, nor it is on the professional sort of level, but it's actually can be easily embedded into the early education. This is when I go around in most of the high schools and actually they can see how uh, the topics, the chemistries, the physics, they see it in action. They understood and they even ask more questions than the adult counterparts. So in short, I mean, like it, this is goes into the areas of science, conservations, uh, history of the technology, and certainly uh, we can explain well the aesthetics, uh, culturally based or even towards whichever canon of uh, history, which is can be the Western or the Eastern or Oriental, and also towards the archival practice. And then 
and how we should see here is this is what we call, I, I, I enjoy looking at this uh, illustration, uh, which is called the silver tree, as seen here, firmly illustrated by the photo historian, Mr. Mark Osterman, who is uh, from the George Eastman House, also known as a HQ for the Kodak Company, if one wants to know. Though it is un with unfortunate news that I, that I heard that um, this month will be his last month to be uh, in the family of George Eastman House, in which he will be retiring. So every areas that we see here keeps a sort of internal logic uh, throughout uh, thematic continuity of uh, this sort of adventures into uh, utilizing the silver nitrate. Apart from overviewing the different topics concerning photographic conservation, um, the advanced sort of structured or the conclusive units you can see that we it moved from silver bromide or iodide that you can see on the tree here. Uh, it has a lot of aspects on uh, historical value, the technology that is required in utilizing it, the factors that would deteriorate of those who are utilizing it or to those that is poorly done in terms of the methodology, and also the conservations uh, of the photographic uh, material. Each of these areas contains certainly the topic is a basic set of knowledge uh, they, that they are from the introduction, the development through history, the forms and decays, and the methods of conservations and preservations. As these areas are interconnected, the, con the content of each areas in these bodies of knowledge could be formulated in any sense as uh, an applied courses or applied science or applied arts. Therefore, it is not limited towards a list of subjects in which the, order, the orders of this can be altered. The contents can be organized in sequence, which allows, uh, by coincidence or proximity, as the six areas in which I had uh, mentioned before. While studying the evolution uh, towards in the daguerreotype practice, uh, for example, uh, myself as a practitioner would allow to learn more towards the areas of chemistries and the treatment possibilities, particularly in the areas of housing, storage, and display. This sort of different is due or complex variable of preparation. Sensitizing, the development, and the finishing remains entirely in the control on the practitioner's mannerism in methodologies and material knowledge. This uh, sort of uh, framework of uh, educational model, hopefully, therefore, will promote to the use of material study and grounded into the methodologies that arrive for optimal exposures in which phases towards here. As a conclusion towards this, hopefully that I'm not finishing this up way too early. Sometimes I can speak quite a lot on, on this part, but it is not just theoretical exercise but it is more of a training apprenticeship sort of program. It's either can be partial or complete version. That I had noted that in Malaysia itself, it's imperative that the treatment towards our historical visual uh, materials have a linkage uh, towards a certain effort for photographic conservation that is much needed. The first area is uh, to be introduced, uh, I mean, like all this teaching, I mean, it can be done as lectures, laboratory sessions, the reading and also the related uh, materials of his bibliography can be planned and organized. It is certainly an interdisciplinary uh, by far. I mean, it can be worked in between conservators, the historians, scientists, the, practi the practi practitioners themselves curators, and essentially uh, towards the development and consistent program and the field for photographic conservation. Dr. Mike Robinson, uh, who had noted in his thesis, had noted the importance on understanding the need towards this uh, photo historical processes, in which by replicating uh, the materials, the tools, and the steps and the methodologies and the processes used by this uh, 19th century practitioners is very, very much effective in recovering the tacit knowledge or the unwritten human agency, which will uncover 
the unwritten aspects that will go beyond the scope of just being an archivist, a conservator or restorer of these artifacts. Uh, on a rather crude conversation that I had with Dr. Robinson, he mentioned like about 100 years from now, if you pass our mobile handphone uh, for this archivist and all in the manual, it says just turn it on. He believed that none could e even understood how it's being done uh, unless that he pressed on the on button or the power button for five seconds. So it's all this intricate, tiny little tacit knowledge that he meant uh, that is necessary to be experienced by the person himself. So this will in turn build the necessary critical focus that move beyond the aesthetics, also to be involved in the shortcoming in the materiality of photographic materials. Myself, as a practitioner, understand the ability to extract meaning in a way that historians cannot access or speak about. And certainly to do this continuously, one would understand the most effective method within this practice. Um, yeah, I hope that, um, that concludes my presentation of this. And I'm very much open to Q&A and um, uh, for this paper presentation for the practicing uh, in the 19th century photo historical process. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kairul, for your presentation. Uh, myself, I don't really teach 19th century and more 20th century with film. So it was very uh, enriching to know that this process requires multidiscipline uh, more than just optics and, and developing. Uh, actually, I have a question for you. Um, in Malaysia, how popular is 19th century photography right now? Well, popularity. Can you hear me? Uh, um, yes, I can hear you. Um, can you hear me? Uh, okay. All right. Um, am I on? Can you hear me, Gabriel? Yes. Yes, okay. I can hear your voice. Sorry. Okay, um, popularity in terms on there are two facets to this. Uh, practitioner wise, um, I believe there is a growing uh, trend towards this, and I sort of uh, had to have a moment, momentary pause, and actually had to consider on how to disseminate this knowledge. And doing this in schools, uh, particularly on the, uh, the elementary schools or the high schools, I have more fun uh, displaying these methods and they understood the science of this very, very well. And they capture it and they, they see how things are visibly uh, developed before their eyes. These are the seeds that I like to implant. For practitioners, I would say there is roughly, maybe there's less than five right now. Okay, similar but, to Thailand. Similar, but they are less than five that I can recognize. Certainly that I'm not certain to those that is uh, quiet away from social media. I myself, I quiet away from social media for quite a while. I live in <laughs> more like a hermit of seclusion, uh, trying to master this practice. So in terms of practitioners, it will, I mean, there will be there. And I believe even in Bangkok, there are several good amount of early photo uh, practitioners practitioners as well, and there are groups of it. Uh, Dr. Kairul, could you stop sharing your screen and oh, so sure. we could Sorry. we could see your face? <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, let me... Sorry. Uh, all right. By the way, I'm going to open the floor for questions. And I think I have a question from my colleague over there, Ajahn Dino. Just a minute. Testing. Okay. Hello and good morning. Thank you very much for that. Morning. Beautiful work too. I'd just like to ask a question as why do you think that there's such a revival and in interest in photography when you compare to other formats? For an example, if you look at audio, nobody is interested in rotary telephones. Nobody is interested in the old Edison megaphone recorders, vinyl recording, and even if you look at technologies before then, wax cylinders. And yet, however, if you look in the photography world, people are very interested in how this technology works. Why do you think that there's not a revival or an interest in other formats? OK, 
Okay. Um, the closer answer to this, um, let me answer on the yeah, two segments. One is the uh, other AV format and the other one is photography itself. In photography, if you uh, want to look into Jill Seinfeld's uh, and Tim Persinger's uh, writing, it is um, the tactile, uh, the tactile uh, conditions that photography has, I mean, on the early photography process, particularly in the uh, areas where uh, it utilizes chemistry. And doing this uh, in an open space is almost like a, a performing art on its own. Uh, one would imagine like doing the, uh, the 19th century process, I have to bring literally almost 50 kilos of equipment. And of course I have like a sarcastic remarks by people, look, I can do this with my mobile phone and they just walk away. Where else it took me like a good two hours just to set up to do one image. And it is uh, cumbersome, but however, the satisfaction of making uh, is there. And the failure rate is very high. I mean, like uh, with uh, lack of practice, and certainly if chemistries are not well understood, I mean, like the failure rate is going to be there. But um, however, it's always an impressive sight if one were to work, particularly the, the garotype. The garotype is like a whenever, not only is very, very expensive that you, you work with a noble metals and certainly gilded with gold as well. Um, the, the failure rate is like almost 90% or 95% when one starts, but then it reduces down as you, as you keep on understanding your physiology, actually your, your body built is, uh, is part and parcel towards on the methodology towards preparing the plates. So it is a continuous rigorous exercise that uh, is an exercise of a muscle memory as well that is required into this practice. Although I am not all too familiar with uh, the technology for the audio um, in creating a wax. Uh, oh, sorry, um, Mr. Argentino, you mentioned like uh, the use of uh, the old technology such as the uh, Edison's gramophone and so forth. I think it's more of a extensively, not all equipments can be reproduced. I'm hazily guess right here, but with this 19th century photography, it's all a multi-component of things that one needs to build. The camera that I have to take uh, a large portion of carpentry skill, and I have to do metal smithing, which is out of convenience that I learned this craft along the way on the side job as an art student. I believe it's one part and parcel that I'm blessed that, that uh, I'm that I had to take a lot of side jobs when I was growing into the career of art where I have to be a carpenter, I do a lot of metal smithing, welding and all that. And it just gels quite nicely into its place and I understand on what needs to be done. In short, you have to be a handyman. Um, yeah, that's, that's my, my way of looking. There's at one it. thing I could add to you as well. It's something about uh, daguerreotype that you can't do digitally. The quality of those images are stunning. And really, right. when you see them yourself, you probably will understand why those images and this process are still popular today. Mm -hmm. uh, my friends who are like 20 years old or 22 years old or even 30 years old now still love to do this process because the image you get it's something you can't do digitally. There's a mirror behind this. It's, it's a metal plate. It's not even paper. So you can't even do this with ink. So that's one of the things about also those processes that are popular and coming back right now. And there's something about the difficulty of making these processes too, which kind of makes you, I think, looking cool, Dr. Cairo, <laughs> with your no, little hand. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still a student well, of like, this craft. <laughs> the time where everything so. is so fast, when you do things mm. slow, you are noticed in a way. Right. Um, Is there any more questions on the floor? No. Dr. Carol, I would like to thank you for your presentation, and uh, I hope I can see you in person next year. That is the plan, and uh, <laughs> I would love to visit your good university as well. Um, thank you so much for the SUIC for giving me this platform and to share this session of paper as well.